Okay, so we left off of part seven, and I had just had kids. So what happened after that? The kids were born in December 2018, or 2008. So stay tuned, and we're gonna do part eight. All right, so thanks everybody for watching. This is part eight in the series. And where I left off was we had, uh, my wife and I had just had two kids. We had twin boys in December of 2008, and I had just competed. I felt great. You know, life was good. So what happened after that? So 2009, 2010, well, 2009 was honestly extremely challenging. We had two babies at once. We had some people that were, that were helping us, but it was really challenging, not a lot of sleep. So I opted to take that year off competing so we could focus on you know, getting our kids off to a good start. So I didn't really compete. For those of you who've maybe had twins or triplets maybe, or you know somebody who has, you know that that is very challenging. You know, people like to give you all their parenting advice, put them to bed at the same time, and you know, like they're robots, but that's not how kids work. And one of mine would sleep through the night and the other one wouldn't. And you know, you just have those kinds of challenges. So 2009, I took off. And uh, 2010, I decided to kind of get back into the mix. I thought it would be a good idea to go back down to the light heavyweight class. Now, I was in really good shape, probably at about, I'm going to say about two, 207 to 210. Getting down to 198 proved uh, very difficult, and it definitely completely destroyed my upper body. I think I ended up getting, I don't know, 12th or 13th in the North American. Um, so it was, it was an experiment going wrong. And I remember just to get down to that weight class, I remember the last couple weeks, I was eating very little protein. I literally was just eating essential amino acid tablets all day because it was so hard to get down that low. I, I mean, you guys may have seen my stories about getting down to the 212 class recently. Well, this was every bit as worth, worse, if not worse, getting down to the 198 class back in 2009. So, so I tried that experiment. You know, that's something people always talk about. You know, do you drop down a weight class so you look bigger? But most of the time when people do that, they actually look a lot worse. And it's one thing if you're two pounds over, but it's another thing if you're 10, 11, 12 pounds over and you're ready. You know, that extra 10, 11, 12 pounds will almost always come at the cost of uh, your look. You almost always look worse. So that wasn't a good move on my part. Um, so I came back in 2010 and I said, let's just get back to being me. Forget uh, making the weight class. Worked really, really hard. My goal really was, at this point, I really wasn't thinking much about a pro card. I just wanted to be competitive again. You know, maybe make the top five, maybe make the top 10 and be competitive. So I went back to the North American and I got back up to about 208, 209 on stage. I want to say I got maybe like eighth or ninth or something like that. I'd have to, I'd have to look it up, but I did, I did get a little bit better. I could see some of my old shape coming back and I was pretty excited. Um, you know, one of the things about um, that show that I remember was that was the first show that I really strategically used cheat meals. And I remember every Wednesday, I would have um, uh, pancakes from Trader Joe's, the gluten-free pancakes for my post-workout meal. And I remember every Saturday night, I would have a hamburger and french fries um, with my wife at uh, Five Guys. So I had, I had always been one of those guys, I was 100% opposed to cheat meals. Like, you're not hardcore if you're doing cheat meal. But I decided to use them, and I just kept getting harder and harder and harder. And they had no positive, or they had no negative effect. And it certainly had a positive effect on my mental being. I felt a little better. I had something to look forward to, um, not only food-wise, but something to do uh, with my family. So that's when my theories around um, cheat meals really changed, and I could see actually see the benefit of it. And it, if you don't use a cheat meal, um, that's fine, but I'm just saying that there is a strategic, there's a physiological and a psychological benefit to using them strategically. So I'm going to wrap it up there. Um, the next, uh, the next time we talk, I'm going to tell you about how I all of a sudden put on a lot of muscle, 
And that pro, card, that pro card started to once again become a reality after all these years of ups and downs, ups and downs, ups and downs. So stay tuned.